you you wrote that you first met uh, Harry in, in the in the 90s. What what was the occasion for your meeting? Uh, well, actually, we met through a mutual friend at the at the bar that's in the film at the, um, Dan Tanis, where he is, you know, many nights a week, mm. and um, and we started talking, and we just. We just hit it off and um, and have been friends ever since, really. What kind of friend is he? He's he's someone I feel connected to, you know, somebody um, who I felt like I knew even when I didn't know him yet. Well, you know, so so many of our greatest actors, and and a lot of them are. Our character actors, they they are. You get the you feel that they are authentic people. Uh, there's no there's no BS uh, to them. Um, and I mean, and I get that strong sense from him. Do you think that's the case? Yeah, I think he has. You know, as you see in the film, like he has ways to. Um, He's not somebody who shows his emotions um, or, to- well, actually, I think he shows them because I think you can see them, but he doesn't express them verbally much. So I think he's he's built up uh, a sort of a persona for him um, to, to protect himself from that. But... Um, I think it's visible, you know, in, in characters like Travis, obviously, in Paris, Texas, and also very much in, in his songs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's all there. It's so, Yeah, it's all there through his artistic expression. Um, yeah. Do, do you find that he he's a man that um, that frequently looks back, or is he constantly looking ahead? Well, he's constantly working on being in the moment mm. and that was uh, part why it was difficult to convince him to do a documentary because he said he didn't you know he doesn't care about the past or uh, wants to talk about it which you know would be a, a, the story of a documentary really mm. so I tried to find ways that show that that are more just being with him you know, than telling his life from A to Z. Was one of the keys to to getting him comfortable with the idea of a film, was that just to, to showcase his singing? Yeah, at the end, it was kind of how the whole film started too, because when I started recording songs with him years before we started filming him, um, because I I just thought he was incredible. And um, and there's no recordings really. There's a, there's a few you know recordings for films that he was in, but um, a lot of musicians tried to get him to a studio and record songs with him, but he never wanted to do that. Somehow he felt uncomfortable being in a studio, so I would go to his house and record him there. Hmm. And um, and then and then that's where when I thought I should also film him doing that and um when i first mentioned a documentary to him he you know he um he he said no way never and it would go on that he said no for a whole year and i would keep calling but trying not to call too often you know yeah and at the end i just said forget about the word documentary or biography let's just we'll just come Seamus the cinematographer and and i and the sound man and just record a song or two and see how he feels and then we'll take it from there. Yeah. So so speaking of Seamus, um in terms of the the feel and the structure of the documentary, it's very unique. Uh and I'm curious to know at what stage did you guys determine the the kind of the style, stylistic direction of the movie? Um, well, first I knew I did. I met Seamus while I was, you know, starting to record the songs with Harry and thinking it would be great to film it too. And 
a lot of people told me you just go there, do it yourself uh, with a video camera, and I just knew that I wanted a different look. I wanted because you know his face being so expressive and him you know being a, a movie star basically. I just wanted a cinematic look, and um, and then Seamus you know happily. Uh, I mean, gladly uh, agreed. And um, the thing about black and white and color sort of came... I mean, when we started the first time, I just we tried and it just, it just looked much better in black and white. And mm-hmm. um, it made it more dramatic somehow. Yeah. But it, when you're because the movie, um, you know, it's not like other uh, documentaries of, of biographical documentaries. There's not a this is my childhood and this is how I came up and now this is my career. It's not. It doesn't go kind of stage by stage in that linear way. Mm-hmm. So was there a lot of uh, did you? play a lot with structure in the editing room before you f- before you really found what you were looking for? Yeah, it, I mean, it was quite a long process, but I I always knew that I wanted to do something that would be true to him, to his own philosophy, which is not thinking in linear terms, which is more of a, you know, just a try to be in, in his head like a stream of consciousness and mm-hmm. find these connections because he also says you know everything is connected it's all one connected whole so i try to find visual things or thematic things to string it all together yeah you know i don't know if you notice for example the strings of the guitar in at the end of the cool hand loop clip and then mm. it cuts to the to the wires in la that look like strings like little things like that just to try to connect everything. I did see I there there are beautiful transitions like that all the way through the movie. I thought were I thought were terrific. Um tell me about because for film fans there's so much great stuff in your movie that that film fans are just going to go crazy over including this this conversation on the couch where essentially uh David Lynch begins to interview Harry. Um uh, T- tell me, w- interviewing his collaborators, what what were common themes that kept popping back up from from the people that work with him? He's he's truthful in you know in his, in his work that um, he's not like anybody else, hmm. and that he kept sort of a independence for himself in all those years in in Hollywood. Yeah. I, I'm just I've, I've always been so amazed by his talent, and I mean there are many movies where he he just has one scene, like like something like uh, Twin Peaks Fire Walk with Me. I think he has one scene, and there's so much life in in what he gives that that character, and and those those few moments that he has in that movie, it's just staggering. I mean that's a fully lived in character expressed in you know two minutes yeah. of film it's amazing to me yeah also the the, the straight story yeah and and it's this, it's the same same thing he's he's sitting there and and you can tell there's this there's this bond and this amazement that his brother went through all of that to to come see him one last time it's beautiful um so tell me how he um has reacted to this documentary being done and and out there. Uh, uh, Apparently, there came a time when he was accepting of the idea of this documentary. Do do you feel that he's fully embraced the fact that there's a movie about him out there? Uh, If he can fully embrace something, then, (laughs) then, yeah, I think think he does. Um, He's had the DVD for ever since it premiered in Venice last year, in September. But he's never watched it until it was the film was shown here at the LA Film Fest in June. Mm. So all these months he had the DVD but didn't watch it. 
and um, and I was quite nervous to see what he thinks, you know, not having seen it, and then see it with an audience. But um, I was very glad that he did like it, and his only comment was that he looked so fucking old. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, his only negative comment. I, I think he was. He was actually. Yeah, he liked it. It 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 has to be. Uh, I mean, it has to be difficult for him. Uh, for anyone, if a movie's made on anyone, I would think it would be a difficult process to to to, to see your life up there. But but also extremely nerve wracking for you because you want to pay honor to to this man and you don't you want to get it right. Yeah, and then you never know how the person reacts, you know, what they see in, in yeah. seeing themselves. But, um, no, it, work, it worked out well, and he um, he was surprised. You know, the pe- there were a lot of people there, and he got a standing ovation, so he was really moved by the the attention he's getting now. Do, do you because think he, that he... You know, had... he hasn't had that kind of attention since Paris, Texas, really. Right. Do you get a sense that he understands um his contribution to 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 acting and to filmmaking does he feel that at all it's hard to tell because he would say no um and in a way he thinks that too i think because he hasn't been a you know he he's played one leading role really but at the same time, I, I'm sure he knows that he's, you know, because he's been in so many films and in so many important films, that he knows that he has his place somehow. When you look at his work, um, what are your favorite moments from, from his performances? Well, I mean, the first time I you know, was aware of him was Paris, Texas. So that, and I loved that movie, mm-hmm. and I saw that before I actually met him. So that, you know, is probably one of my favorites. And then, yeah, definitely um, the straight story. So, so when the when the camera wasn't rolling, did did do you find that he shares more with you on, on a on a, pers- a personal level? when the camera's not rolling or, or is is what we see in the movie is is that how he is uh in in one-on-one private conversation with friends or is he a bit more revealing and mm, not really it's pretty much what you see pretty much what you get when you see him in person and know him yeah um it was important to me that that we keep it really intimate. So it was just um, was just the three of us. I mean, the sound guy Seamus and I, and Harry Dean. Um, and since we know each other, and he really likes Seamus too, it was an intimate atmosphere mm-hmm. that pretty much reflects how he is, even if the camera wasn't rolling. Mm. I mean, what's interesting with him is that he knows when it is rolling. He knows exactly how or where to how to position his face to the best effect, you know, which is which is funny to to watch. There's, for example, that scene when he says he doesn't want to talk about his his um, mother or father. Mm-hmm. He looks up, and you feel like he knows exactly how the you know light hits his eyeball to where it has the most dramatic effect. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's been doing it so long. I'm sure it's it's completely second nature. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have to ask because I'm just so curious. Has has Jack Nicholson seen it yet? Because they're they're close friends, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I you know obviously I tried to get him in in the film, but um, I don't know if I I doubt that he's seen it. I hope he'll come to the L.A. premiere on the September 13th. <laughs> <laughs> 